so I uh, figured before we got onto the peripherals, I would just show um, kind of what a good versus a bad proxy would look like in practice. Um, so I have a scan that I just did, uh, and we have some good and some bad SOX5 uh, proxies. So I will just drag this over here. 14.192.8.153. And then we'll put that on 1080, which is just a standard port. Uh, and we will hit OK. So now my Mozilla Firefox is using that proxy. We can go ahead and refresh IP chicken. And it loads under that IP. So we can now, so that was a good IP. Uh, we can now go ahead and try this with a quote unquote bad IP. Uh, 217.23.6.40 on the same port and go over to IP chicken and refresh it. And you'll see, um, so the first one is marked as good, and sure enough, we were able to connect. And this one is marked as bad, and we're not able to connect. So those are the results that you can kind of be expecting to see. Uh, and that should give you an idea of what the good versus the bad actually represent. So with that being said and understood, uh, let's get back to uh, the code. So, for in general, we've kind of gotten to the end of all of the major things. So everything else will just be small peripherals that kind of just improve uh, the application. So uh, we will add a new button. Let's put it down here, and we will call this button. Um, clear bad IPs, since if it's a bad IP, why do we want it in our list view? So for this, what we're going to do is we will create a um, good list, we'll call it, uh, as a new list of string. And this list will hold all of our um, good, quote unquote, good proxies for us. So the first thing we'll do is iterate through our list view. And then if it's second to sub item is equal to good, then we will, oops, and what am I doing? We will add, um, that to the item. We will add the item to that list rather. Um, and it's going to have to be, oh, let's make this list view item for simplicity's sake. There we go. Since there's no real reason for it to be a, a string, we can just uh, keep everything in the list view item format. And then we can go down by one and we can do list view one dot items dot clear and um, for each item in good list, we will list to you one dot items dot add item. Um, cool. It actually just occurred to me uh, when we click this button, we're probably going to want to clear that clear list because that caused problems with what we're doing now. If you got a bunch more IPs and then started to check them or changed the actual amount because the cure list won't be getting changed. So it's important that we clear the cure list after, uh, before we actually do any kind of checking. Um, so yeah, but that, that should be that. So that'll actually handle getting rid of all of the bad, um, items and just does this by detecting going through every single item detecting whether or not they're good or bad if they're good they're going to be added to the good list if they're bad we're not doing anything with them 
and then we're going to be clearing the list view, getting rid of every item in it, and then going back through our good list and adding in all of the items from our good list to our list view. So that should be um, relatively simple, um, at least hopefully to follow. Uh, so let's now add another button. And this can just be clear IPs. And this can just be as simple as list view one items are clear. And honestly, in here we can also cure, uh, clear the cure list just because. Uh, okay, so then that should be that for the buttons. And then it might be good, as you actually just saw before, a, a problem in practice. I had to uh, kind of type out each of the IPs that I was trying to put in. Uh, so if we wanted to stop that, we can add in a context menu strip. That would probably be the easiest way to do it, so I'll double click that. And then we will be going to our list view. This will be the first event in the list view. And I'm going to go to the events over here by this lightning bolt. And we will do mouse down. So this will create for us the list view mouse down event so that we don't have to uh, worry about creating our own sub procedure for that. And here we're going to do if e dot button is equal to mouse buttons dot right, then context menu strip one dot show, and then we're gonna have it show a mouse position. So this is, uh, so e in this instance is going, is all of the mouse event arguments. So, Basically, we're saying if the right mouse button is clicked, then we want to show our new context menu strip uh, at our uh, mouse position. So now we can go to the context menu strip and we can do like copy IP and maybe uh, remove IP. Those are probably two pretty good options. So for copy IP, uh, all that we're going to need to do is the first thing that we'll have to do is no what we should do here is we need to check first to make sure that there is a selected item in the list view so if list view one dot selected items is greater than negative uh probably can't count there we go i knew that there was something else is it greater than negative one uh, okay, so now first it's going to check to make sure that the right button has been hit, and then it's also going to make sure there is a selected list view item, since both our copy and remove tools are going to be based off of the idea, off the principle, that there is in fact a selected uh, IP. And here, all that this is going to be is my dot computer dot clipboard dot set text list view one dot selected item zero dot sub item zero dot text so that's just going to be setting our computer's clipboard to whatever's here in this case it's going to be our selected item and then the first sub item which is the ip and the the context of that the the text of that so uh, that's simple enough. And then for remove IP, it's just going to be list view one dot items dot remove list view one dot selected item zero. Okay, so let's try that out. Um, actually, and you know what you can also do very quickly is we can add in a um, text box up here. And then this text box will be what we use. So instead of, I tested it on a different website, so that's not the normal thing, but we can, I'll show you that it still works. Uh, so we can just switch this to text box one dot text. And then in the actual text box, we can put whatever website we want uh, so this is a different website than I had previously used since the other one was mostly SOX4 proxies and none of them seem to be very good, at, at least for these purposes. 
So this one's all SOX 5 or mostly SOX 5, uh, but you can see that it still works. This is the one that I had been using. Um, you'll notice, you'll recognize these two IPs. Um, so we can go ahead and check the IPs. Sure enough, this one's still good. Okay, so now they're all checked. So the first thing that we can do, we'll first just uh, work with uh, removing an IP. There it goes, it's gone. Okay, so that works. Um, and then the next thing that we can work on is I will drag over a notepad. Let's just go ahead and copy this IP and we can paste it there. And sure enough, that works just fine. So now let's clear all the bad IPs. Perfect. So now we're just left with the good IPs. And finally, let's just clear all of them. Perfect. Everything's working nicely. So yeah, that should be pretty much everything you need. You could probably add like an export function or something like that along with it so that you could export all of the IPs to a list, all of the good IPs to a list, however you want to do it. There's quite a few other things, but this was just to make a very basic dynamic proxy scraper for uh, anybody who was interested in either learning how to do that or interested in needing proxies for an application they were making or something along those lines. I know proxies aren't uh, nearly as popular or useful as they used to be, but I figured that this could still be a useful project and kind of a useful code along. So yeah, hopefully this was insightful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you about it. All right, thanks.